There's so much toxicity out there, I don't even know where to begin. Hey loves, it's your favorite blind chick back on your screen with another one. In light of everything going on with the JBP, I've been inspired to make this video. Let me know if you like this type of content and maybe I'll make a series where we talk about people, personality traits, and just seeing different perspectives. So this episode is gonna be about 12 types of toxicity. After all, toxicity is not a person, it's a trait. So we're gonna go through this list. Let me know down below which type of toxicity say that word three times fast, you've encountered, as well as what type of toxic you are. Because I believe everybody's got a different level of toxicity. In full transparency, I want you to guess which one I am, and I'll let you know at the end of this video, but let's go. So the first one is probably the most common, but also one of the most annoying. It's the judger. This is a person that sits on their perch and just judges. Maybe they don't even know they're doing it, or maybe they think they mean well by it, but Nothing good comes out of judging other people. I mean, at the end of the day, I do believe that we all judge. I mean, there's stereotypes, there's biases, but when you think of these things, they usually aren't a good thing. The judger is someone, whether they're a family, friend, or your significant other, is gonna say something, and maybe in the moment, you don't even take it that way, but after things build and grow, you realize they've been seeing you in this light, and that's gonna affect their perspective of how you move and how they move. Be careful with the judger because a lot of times, if they're judging you or others that way, they probably see themselves that way. And anyone that sees themselves in a negative light to that degree is something you need to be wary of. The second toxic trait is the analyst. Go on Canva, go ahead and print them off a psychoanalyst certificate because they're fiending for one. This is a type of person that sits there, much like the first one, on their high horse, trying to direct everyone. They give out advice when you never ask. Maybe you're just confiding in them or venting, and then they're preparing a 10-step program for you, or they're telling you what you need to do. The best advice you can give someone is through their eyes. So first of all, you have to hear this story. Know that there's three sides, because no matter what anyone tells you, there's always another side and another side. And then from there, you, you give advice maybe because you want what's best for the person, but bigger than that, because you see that the person is not you. The advice I give you from this chair is different from where you're sitting and vice versa. And I think the biggest mistake the analyst makes is they're looking at it only through their lens instead of having the perspective of the person that's confiding in them. Big no-no. The third trait is the muzzler. They zip it up, they don't speak when they need to speak or they hold things in and you can't really read them. Sometimes they even leave you on red so you don't know what's going on. The muzzler is a tricky one because you feel like you're treading on ice or on water or whatever the phrase is and you don't know whether they're coming or going. Maybe one day they're cool, the next day they ghost you. People with this muzzler trait have you thinking like, how long were you mad about this? From when you were in the womb, like let it go. The fourth one is a four letter word, but it's not love. It's the liar, which to me, is perhaps out of all of these, the most unnecessary. Out of all these toxic traits, like I don't know about you, but my mom was so strict growing up, so she was just, she was not here for the lies. And because of that, as an adult, I'd rather tell the truth, even if it makes me look a type of way, because watch, the day will come when fact is stranger than fiction, and because you've been lying, people are not gonna believe your truth when you need them to. There's been people who have lied to my face, and I just give them that look like, you really think I'm stupid? because you're lying, I know you're lying, and there's no point to this. Usually people lie for two reasons, to keep up image or to protect the other person. I don't think either of those are good reasons. If you can come up with a good reason for lying, leaving it down below, let me know. I just, I can't, I'm not here for that. There's really no reason. If you're not ready to say your piece or your truth, I say stay silent. I know some people think omission is a lie in itself. I'm not saying don't say nothing. I'm just saying take your time with the truth. But to lie for lying's sake, and a lot of my friends have lied over stupid things, like did you go here today? No, it's on your story, yo. Like, I just don't understand people. Did you do this? No, why would I do that? Just, just say yeah and leave it at that. I just asked to ask. I just asked literally to know if you're gonna lie to me. I don't even care about the thing itself. I more wanna know, 
Are you going to sit in my face, look at my little blind eyes, and lie to me straight? That's all I wanted to know, and you failed. If you thought four got under my skin, this one is way worse. It's the pusher. This is the boundary breaker, whether they do it in small ways or they're bulldozing past your limits. I, I've had my experiences. It's annoying, and it also makes you feel like, what have I done to think to make this person think that what they're doing is okay? When it comes to the pushers, you really got to give them the five finger special. Just, okay, maybe not, but I think it's very important for you to take the moment to look in words and realize what you've been doing to enable this situation. I find that if you have one push in your life, you probably have plenty, you just don't realize it. It's the type of trait where, in all honesty, a lot of people are pushers because they want to get their way. And the best way to realize if your friend or your family or significant other has a pusher tendency is if you switch up on them, you're doing better for yourself, you're really hard set in your boundaries, and they have a problem with that. There's a quote about it, I can't think about it right now, but when you set up your boundaries and you stand by them and you realize that people that care about you don't like it, that's a clear sign they got this toxic trait. The sixth toxic trait is the savior. This person sits high, holier than thou, trying to solve problems like the analyst, but it's even worse because they sit with this air about them, that uh, I know it all aura that I just can't with. The savior is a type of person that also maybe in a relationship is a build-a-bear person trying to fix someone. And there's nothing worse than being with someone, falling in love with someone, and then them trying to fix aka change you. Take the person as they are or leave them where they are and keep going. If you realize that you're the type of person in a relationship or a friendship or even with your family that's trying to fix everyone or you know what's best for them, you really need to take the time to look inwards and maybe put that energy inwards too. Let's get spicy with it, the vendetta. This seventh one is paired well with the muzzler because usually people who hold it in don't speak out they eventually explode. And that's what the vendetta is going to do. They're going to hold a grudge and maybe one day seek revenge on you. That's just what it is. And it's very, very toxic because it happens out of nowhere. And for bystanders, they're just like, what's going on here? Like this person's tripping over this little bit. The other person's looking like what's going on. But unbeknownst to everybody, the vendetta has been holding on. They've been holding on. They've been stacking on facts. They've been just waiting for that perfect moment to pound. There's this quote that says, hatred is like the acid in a container. It hurts the holder more than the person it's spilled on. That is so true. If you're the person who has this toxic trait, trust me, let it go. Let it go. It's not worth it. It's always gonna hurt you in the long run. You might feel good in the moment. You know, revenge is best served cold. But if you can grow and go past something or leave it where it is, that's way better than holding on to something and waiting for that moment. Number eight, if you turned it on its side, looks like the infinity sign. And I feel like this, out of all the traits, is never going to go away. It's going to go to the end of time. It's the go round. Basically, the gossiper. But let's just take this to another level. My example for this is a couple years back, I was sitting at a round table. How perfect was that? looking at five other chicks. I was closest friends with one of them. The other four were friends by association. And I don't know what it was about that night, but I looked around at all the women. I'm like, how is it that I know you cheated on your man? You have some fraudulent-ish going on in your life. You are getting fired next week and you don't even know. And I forgot what was going on with the fourth chick, but I had no business knowing what it was. All I know is it had me looking at numero uno a different type of way. Cause I'm like, how is it that all these people are your close friends? but I know all this stuff about them. There is no way under this hot sun that they don't know the things I told you in confidence. That's not even what got to me. The thing with the go round that has me triggered and concerned is that they take pleasure or at the very least take time to talk your business to other people. A person that doesn't have enough going on in themselves, in their lives, or is fulfilled in themselves, that's gonna talk about someone else is always someone you need to be cautious of, because at the end of the day, that's a very, very potent trait that can really mess up friendships, relationships, and family ties. Nine is another one that has too much time. It's the accountant. Whether literally they be keeping track of their finances and, Trust me, I'm a frugalista, okay? I like to be a budget bandit, but this is next level. This is the type of friend 
or your romantic partner, or even someone in your family that's counting, penny pinching, asking you to split the Uber, or ask for the cash app right after you have dinner, like just chill. I'm the type of person, you know, I get you, maybe you get me the next time, maybe you don't and vice versa. That's how friendship should be. The more you give, I feel like the more you receive anyway, so you don't need to be pocket watching in that way. I get it that we're going through hard times economically, so if you don't have it, that's okay but don't be watching my wallet at the same time. There's nothing worse than someone who's going to make it about every nickel and dime. It just doesn't make sense to me. Then on the other side of that, the accountant is a type of person who must have an Excel sheet on their phone, on their computer, because they'd be tallying up things that happened in summer 16. It's so unnecessary, like some other traits, this pairs well with the traits of people that maybe are the analysts or the savior, where they're stacking and stacking and stacking. Maybe they're gonna have a vendetta and save this for a later time, or maybe they're just keeping in their mind so that they can be miserable about all the things that happened to them or things that are working out for other people that don't work for them. The accountant can also be a jealousy trait because if you're going to sit there and reflect and keep in your head and your heart all of these things to use at a later date, there's some envy in there and I'm just not here for that. Ten, this tenth one is the finder. The finder is someone who's always looking for problems. Life could be good, it could be swell, but they've always got something. It's not to be mistaken with someone who maybe has mental issues, is going through a tough time. Maybe they had a couple bad days or years. Let's keep it real. The finder is someone who's always looking for problems. It's a little different. Life could be going well. They could be on the up and up, but they're still looking for that one thing to be miserable about. What's worse is the finder usually doesn't just do that to themselves. They'll do that with their friends. They probably have the go round trait too, so they're talking to you about what their friends are achieving, why they don't deserve the same thing, or why they should be getting what they have, or worse than that, the finder may be looking directly at you and finding problems with you. This is different from calling someone out when they're really all the ways wrong. This is different from letting someone know, hey, Maybe that's not what you should be doing. The finder is someone that's very malicious in their intent and they shroud it like the savior in being good, but usually the finder you can tell straight away does not have good intentions. This 11th trait pairs well with the last. It's the limiter. This is someone who's quick to tell you what you can't do or quick to remind you what you used to be able to do. For example, I'm disabled and people always tell me, but you could do this last week or how come you can do this in one area, but you're too lazy to do this in another. It's not that I'm lazy. I'm legally blind. It's very different things. But in most cases, the limiter is someone who's going to tell you that you're not good enough or not capable, or yeah, you could do that, but it's not gonna work out for you. And they mean to save and shield you. But if you don't take chances, if you don't shoot for the star, how are you supposed to fall amongst the clouds? The limiters are very dangerous because once you start to achieve the very thing they said you can't, you're gonna see some of that envy poking through. I've experienced a couple limiters in my past. I don't have so many in my life anymore, thank God, because it's probably the most energy sucking, draining trait of them all. These are the people that need to be focusing on themselves instead of focusing on bringing you down like crabs in the bucket. Let's put it this way. When it comes to any of these past 11 traits and even the 12th trait, one thing you need to do if you realize that you have a friend, someone you're dating or married to, or in your family that's expressing these things towards you is it's a mirror of what they feel about the world, also how they see you. And all of this is gonna paint a picture and kind of taint the hue of what you're trying to do in your life. You need to have people that see you well. You're not perfect, they're not perfect. But if someone sees you as, oh, you can't do this, or you're not good enough for this, or how did you get this? That energy around you is not healthy, it's not good, and it's only gonna bring you down. So be very careful of the limiter because it's someone who may seem like they're just trying to protect you and your head's in the clouds, or you're always trying to do the most, or you're looking for attention, when really you're just trying to accelerate, advance, and do better, and they don't have it in themselves, so they're trying to pull it out of you. The 12th and final one is the one you can't take nowhere. You can't go anywhere if a friend, a family member, or someone you're dealing with has this because there's just, there's no growing. There's no going, there's nothing. The always right does not want to see things from any other side. They're always right. This is the type of person that comes to you and you hear them talking about something they did or a fallout they had and 
you're like, didn't this happen last year or the year before? Isn't this the 15th person you've had this scenario with? And they never realize that the common denominator is them. The always right is a person that if you want to entertain it, go for it. I don't have the time for it. But they will tell you stories after stories after stories of how this person did them wrong, how this opportunity fell through their fingers, how they didn't get a chance for this. It's sickening. It's the excuses for me. All the other traits, if someone has a more redeeming quality I can deal with and always right, I ain't here for that. That's that on that. And that wraps up the 12 traits I got for today. I'd love to hear what you got to say about these. Did you guess which one I am? If you guess number three, the muzzler, you're right. I do have a little sprinkling of number seven, the vendetta. I'm working on it, okay? The Scorpio and me. If I ever get to the point where I have a vendetta, it's usually because you really wronged me and you deserve it. I mean, I might do a story time on my podcast. I'm not that person anymore. Most of the times I just... If I don't speak in the moment, count your blessings. That means I'm saving it for a time when I can speak more eloquently. One of the things I've learned in my past is that if I'm quick to jump and to say something, it's going to come out wrong. And one thing is you can't take back words. Look what's going on with the JBP. I think if you have good intentions and you really want it to be a moment of growth and a friendship, a relationship, family ship, then from there, you can be more clear. But if you're not saying anything to hold back or because you're scared or you don't know what the other person's gonna think, that's only gonna end badly from you. Take it from me, I know. And as far as holding grudges go and having a vendetta, it ain't even worth it. That energy could be better spent on 10 million other things. Anywho, I hope that you enjoy this video. Let me know by hitting the like button, share if you care, and until next time, stay safe, stay sane, stay blessed. Love and later. Third is me. <laughs> Okay.